Because you believe these five lies, you'll never lose weight. Number one. You'll never be able to eat foods that you enjoy again, like fast food, snacks, treats, desserts, pizza. I used to weigh 275 pounds. My weight was causing me serious health problems to the point where I had sleep apnea so bad I needed a machine to help me breathe at night. And I knew if I didn't make changes that my life was gonna continue to be at risk. I thought I needed to take away all the food that I enjoyed. And every time I did that, it just made me eat more of it, more pizza, more ice cream, and it kept me at my heaviest weight and kept my life at risk. I finally realized taking it away was just causing rebellion. I started to build in the things that I enjoyed into my meal plan every day. I portioned out ice cream, pizza, french fries, according to the serving sizes on the backs of packages as a guide, and it helped because it was sustainable. I was able to include my favorite foods and stay in a calorie deficit because I measured them out. That allowed me to get the results. I was able to lose 130 pounds and keep it off for eight years because I made it sustainable and easy for me to do. Any time that I cut out the foods that I enjoyed, it just caused a cycle of triggering my emotional eating, which I also struggled with, and it just kept me in this never-ending cycle where I could never get out and I could never lose weight, and it kept me stuck and feeling like I was never gonna figure it out. We get asked all the time, what if I like drinking uh, adult beverages, we'll call them, for you We do, all the time. Build it in, build yes. in a glass of W-I-N-E, or B ear. <laughs> B ear. Build it into your calories. Still have it. Don't take it away. Don't make the mistake that me and Nicole did. And because okay. usually it backfires. For example, we really enjoyed ice cream. So we built in a half a cup of ice cream every night for dinner because Kyle's lost the same amount of weight as me and my Stasaruni husband behind the camera and kept it off for the same amount of time. We built that ice cream in and because we had that and looked forward to it every night, it really helped us stay on track. The friends, we're not one of those channels who are gonna tell you that you need to lose weight by only eating grass-fed, organic, only from the health food aisle in the grocery store because we're two regular people who live in the real world on a budget and we have to do things like regular people that shop at Walmart and Costco. And so we just eat food that we like and we portion it out or use the calories to help us eat what we like and stay in a budget and eat food that we have access to because we live in Canada and you don't really have access to a ton of stuff here. <laughs> Number two, you can out-train a bad diet. One of the first questions that we get asked all the time is, what was your exercise? What exercise did you do to lose weight? For years, I thought if I could just find the right exercise or do enough or, you know, just exercise enough to get all of my weight off, that that would be perfect. If I can just do the right exercise, 20 jumping jacks or whatever, that I could burn off all the calories. It doesn't work that way. It's calories in, calories out. It's actually diet first. You have to eat in a calorie deficit, which means you need to eat less calories that you burn, and that's how you lose the weight. Exercise, what Kyle and I found, is more like the cherry on the ice cream or the cherry on the cake. It's a compliment and once we got our diet under control, using portion control in the beginning, then we added 15 minutes of walking a day because that was all we could do at our size physically. 15 minutes was all we could handle. But because our diet was under control, the exercise was really just complimentary. It doesn't matter if you if you do HIT, if you do hours and hours of workout, but you don't look at your diet, you won't be able to lose weight that way. You know, for example, like I do an hour on the recumbent bike in the morning and going, you know, like a moderate pace, I burn 300 calories in one hour. And a lot of the exercise machines at gyms and stuff, they want to make you feel good. So they exaggerate how many calories you burn. So you're not actually even burning that many. So imagine if you're like, 
okay, I'll, I'll go out and I'll eat a large pizza and some French fries and have some adult beverages and then I'll just work it off after. Imagine how many hours you would have to spend exercising. There wouldn't even probably be enough time in the day to burn off all of that and you probably wouldn't even have enough energy or Most even, people aren't that fit. To no, do that. and I was just about to say or you might not even be fit enough, which is why Kyle and I could only walk for 15 minutes in the beginning and that's why diet is key. You need to eat less. It doesn't have to be hugely less, like massive deficit, just a little bit at a time. You know, sometimes we'll say like, even pull back 50 calories a day until you get used to it and then add a, pull back a little more and see that slow and steady wins the race. Calories in, calories out. Exercise is the cherry. Number three, certain foods and food groups are making you gain weight. I had this assumption for years that it was specific foods like french fries or pizza or ice cream that was making me gain weight. I also thought it was specific food groups like carbs, for example. And I hear this all the time. Nicole, you eat too many carbs. How can you lose weight eating all those carbs? What I learned is it's not the carbs, it's not the french fries or the pizza that make you gain weight. It's eating in a calorie surplus. So if you're eating too much of those things, you'll gain weight. If you eat them in a calorie deficit, you can lose weight. So here's an example. When I was struggling with my weight loss, I thought that coffee, bacon, bread, and butter were making me gain weight. So I started avoiding them. Funny thing is, I'm eating bacon, eggs, butter, and toast every morning and coffee to lose weight. It's because I'm eating it in a calorie deficit that I can enjoy all those things and still lose weight. So it's not the food groups. If you're somebody who likes doing, you know, diets like keto where it does limit your carbs, like that's cool if that works for you. But those kinds of things didn't work for me. Removing carbs actually triggered my emotional eating and caused me to gain weight. So for me, eating all of the foods I enjoyed, not removing food groups, actually helped me be, make a sustainable meal plan and diet for weight loss. And that's why I've been able to keep it off for as long as I have. I can follow keto exactly by not eating a carb or keeping my carbs under a certain amount. If I eat in a surplus of butter, steak, eggs, I will gain weight very, very easily. Yes. And that rule applies to everyone. I'll add in a bonus lie that a lot of people believe. If I don't track calories, if I don't know about calories, it doesn't apply to me. A ca calories in, calories out applies to everyone. It doesn't matter if what kind of diet you're doing, if you track them or not. And guess what? We did not track calories. We both had emotional eating and any sort of calorie tracking or numbers really caused us to trigger our emotional eating. So we portioned out our food. We ate all the meals that we enjoyed, but we just portioned them out using the serving sizes on the backs of packages. We couldn't count calories. We literally have no idea how many calories we're eating. We just knew that we were losing weight because we were eating less. So like if it bothers you to track, like it did me and Nicole in the beginning, it triggered things for yeah. us emotionally. If it bothers you, when you step on the scale at the end of the week, if you're up in weight, you're in a surplus. If you're down in weight, you ate in a calorie deficit, even if you didn't know about it. Exactly. You know, so we just wrote down what we were eating, weighed ourselves at the end of the week. If we gained, we would go, okay, let's reduce our serving sizes a little bit and then try it again. If we lost weight, we knew those serving sizes were right because we were eating in a calorie deficit. Good bonus. Number four, there's a magic pill. I thought that if I just found the right fat burner, the right whatever, I did so many fad diets, like everything under the sun. I even did something like where I went to this place and I got my body wrapped in all these tensor bandages and I did, this is not a joke, okay? I had to jump on a trampoline with these soaked tensor bandages and you were supposed to lose inches? Well, I did for that day because I was tightly wrapped and I lost some water weight, but it, it was not a magic pill. I paid like, this is, I'm probably, almost 20 years ago, I paid like three or $400 for that. Imagine what that would be now. 
there's no magic pill. I thought if I just found the right exercise or the right food that one day I would just wake up and all the weight would magically melt off. And I, I really believed that going to that place and getting my body wrapped and jumping on the trampoline, I really believe that that would help me because I was desperate. And there, I know that there are a lot of people out there watching this that are doing those things and looking for the magic pill because they're desperate like I was. And there are lots of companies and, you know, fitness people out there that will take that and sort of prey on that and use that to sell you things that aren't they might, you know, be a compliment some things, but there, there's no magic pill. What really is the key is again, calories in, calories out. You have to eat less. That is something I avoided for so many years, but you know, I'll even say I, one time I bought um, some diet pills and I looked at it and I read everything and on the bottom it said, this will only work if your diet is on point, basically in its own words. And I ignored that part because I wanted just the pill. I just wanted to take the pill. I didn't want to look at eating less. And so I'm just saying in a loving way, like I get it. I really tried to seek the magic pill and there isn't, but it doesn't have to be a lot less, just a little at a time. Small changes is what really helped Kyle and I and literally saved our lives. Number five, healthy foods will make me lose weight. So eating only healthy food will make me lose weight. I really believed this. I thought, you know, okay, if I just eat the healthy foods, like, you know, the foods market is healthy nuts, avocado, um, you know, organic grass fed stuff that I would automatically lose weight. What I didn't realize is yes, healthy foods have some health benefits, but just because it says healthy doesn't mean it's low calorie. So I was eating only healthy food, but I wasn't measuring it out or tracking how much I was eating. So I was eating in a calorie surplus, wondering why these healthy foods weren't making me lose weight. So for example, I would snack on nuts. A quarter cup of nuts is, I would say about 300 calories. So I was just eating them without measuring. I was consuming hundreds of calories without thinking, but I thought because nuts were healthy that they'd help me lose weight. Healthy foods are great, you need them, they're great for nutrients, but you still have to portion them out. You still have to eat them in a deficit. So, you know, we like to include a balance of things. We like to balance the healthy with a few treats, like we add a portion of kids cereal, because the healthy foods, you still need to eat them in a calorie deficit. So we portion everything out. We get asked to all the time, like, vegetables are healthy, why do you measure them out? because we still have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. So we make sure we measure everything that goes into our body when we're leaning out so that we know we're gonna get the results that we want. Take it from me, the friends, the most unhealthy thing is being overweight. My weight, like I said, it was causing me sleep apnea so bad, I was stopping breathing seven times a night. Seven times a night, I was stopping breathing because of my weight. Um, and that it's so important for me to say that. So adding in a little bit of ice cream in a balance of healthy food, or, you know, for me, I enjoy diet pop. It really helps me stay on track. I often get kind of heck for that, but it literally saved my life to have those things included in my diet. And for the most part, I do eat healthy, but having a little bit of kids cereal and some diet pop and some sweetener, those saved my life. And saving my life was way more important than only eating clean organic food. And often I think people get confused between weight loss and health. So this channel, it's about weight loss because in order to save our lives, Kyle and I had to get the weight off. That was a thing that was hurting us and we had to get it off. And now we try to balance out those two health yes. and weight loss and meet it somewhere in the middle where we still, you know, enjoy the foods, but, and also try to add in some healthy fats and protein and all that too. Yeah. And like, we really balance our diet out. It has everything, healthy fats, fruit, veg, lots of lean protein. But in the beginning it's very, very separate things, the health and the weight loss. Yeah. And then once you, you know, if you're enjoying your diet, you're more than likely to stick to it. And then you can build over time. You know, 
if if you don't like something don't eat it pick the things that you like portion it out eat in a calorie deficit you will find your way kyle and i found our way and now we have a really great balance we worked our way up to more cardio but we had to start very small and like we said getting the weight off was really important for us at the time so that was number one now there's a really great balance, kind of like one of those, um, you know, those levelly things. The balance things. Yeah, the balance. Yeah, you <laughs> got it. Now they're here. Before, get the weight off. Health, still important, but weight off. And the funny thing is, even if like we didn't have the best diet, but every pound we lost, we were getting healthier. Exactly. Our, <laughs> our numbers, our blood work, everything getting healthier. Nicole got off the sleep apnea machine and yes. we're not the optimum health people no in diet no and yeah that was exactly it like after i lost my first 50 pounds i was medically cleared of sleep apnea because i lost the weight and we're not doctors that might not happen no to you, but it might not that's personal story yeah that was just an example like i just had to get myself healthy first so hope you guys enjoyed this video um you know there's so many things that people believe that hold them back and there were so many things that I believe that was holding me back. And once I changed the way I looked at stuff, I was able to lose 130 pounds and keep it off for eight years. And if you guys wanna know the exact meals and portions that I ate, check out my weight loss eBooks. The links are down below. Use code Nicole to save yourself 10% off. I also have Huddled HTLT Subs. I am sponsored by this company. Um, they have a really amazing supplements. Luckier marshmallow protein powder is like my favorite flavor. Use code Nicole to save yourself 10% off. Before I end the video, I just want to say something about supplements because we ask, we get asked all the time, like, did you have them the whole way through? Supplements are exactly what the word is. It's a supplement to your diet. So once you have your diet under control, meaning you're eating in a calorie deficit, if you wanna include some protein powder, some protein bars, that kind of thing, absolutely, you know, Kyle and I got our diet sort of figured out first and then we added this, the protein powder and the protein bars the and creatine, stuff. creatine, which really helps with building muscle, yes. strength in the gym, because now we're not just about weight loss, we're trying to reshape our bodies and yes. add and keep muscle. So the creatine really helps now. Yes, it does. And and we really need, we wanted to build muscle because we had loose skin. So it helped, the muscle helps kind of fill out the loose skin a little bit, or at least make it look filled out and more toned. So yeah, it, they're not necessary if you want them. You know, we love adding the supplements in, but our diet is on point first. Always food first and then supplements. Yep. Yep, so hope you enjoyed this vid. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all these cool vids and watch this vid and this vid so you can have more fun weight loss tips and see how fast and I love our food and just get cute and sassy with it. Oh yeah, another thing I just remembered. What? That's a big part of our channel, the eBooks. We make those so-called healthy foods taste better. Yes! Our yogurt parfaits, our, you know, like protein pancakes things you can do with eggs, things you can do with cottage cheese, which most people don't like, but it's healthy for you. We show you how to make it taste good. Oh yeah, we got a guilt-free cookbook. We got a leaner, not meaner, like how I leaned out after losing the weight. And we got how I lost my first 50 pounds, the first 50. There are recipes in all the books and it's exactly it. Making everything taste cute. That's what. So, we'll check in, cuties. We'll check in the next vid. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace out. Cute roomies. See ya. See ya. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it.